Good morning, good morning. Um, well, it's morning for me. It's probably not morning for you by the time you're listening to this. Uh, this morning's book or this evening's book is about a little girl named June Peters and how some small acts of kindness can change the world. So let's see what June does. I share my screen? You are sharing your screen. Okay, good. June Peters, you will change the world one day. And her shirt says, giving is golden. June's smooth chocolate skin and head full of curly sandy brown hair made her as beautiful as the summer month she was named after. She made you as happy as you would be on a perfect summer day on the front porch drinking freshly squeezed lemonade. June was a fearless giver from the heart and very wise beyond her years at only 10 years old. June repeatedly begged her parents to let her walk to school by herself on multiple occasions. I'm in fifth grade, she said. June had always been a very good student. She received excellent grades in school and never got in trouble. I'm responsible, she said. June was much more responsible than her older brothers. She did not have to be told to clean her room or to do any of her chores around the house. I don't have far to walk, she said. June made a strong case, especially considering that her school was only one block away from their home. Finally, her parents agreed to give her a chance for one week. On her way to school, June noticed a man on the side of the street asking people for change. She reached her, into her pocket and pulled out the $3 her mom had given her for lunch. Walking very slowly, she thought about what she could do to help the man who seemed sad. June began thinking about what it may have felt like to be hungry or homeless. She was upset at the thought. She knew what she had to do. She approached the homeless man. Here you are, sir. June placed all her lunch money in the hat that he was holding. Bless you, child. You have no idea the difference you are making. Thank you. The homeless man was beyond grateful for June's kindness. He continued to say thank you even as she walked away. Although now June would have no money for lunch after giving all, all, giving away all of hers. She felt so good inside that she skipped the whole way to school, smiling from ear to ear. Throughout her day at school, June told all of her friends about what she had done for the homeless man on the street and how it made her feel. At the end of the school day, June's mom was outside waiting to pick her up. Still excited about that morning, June immediately began telling her mom all about helping the homeless man on her way to school. Her mom simply smiled and explained to June that she needed to be more aware of strangers and that giving away her lunch money was not acceptable. Her mom began talking in a very stern voice. June, I understand you want to help people and that is fine. However, you need to be careful at all times. There are strangers everywhere. Some are good and some are bad. Your dad and I decided to let you walk to school because you proved to us that you were responsible. June hung her head low. She was sad that she had disappointed her mom. Mom, I'm sorry, she replied. I understand what you're saying, but there are lots of people without food or a place to live, and I just wanna help them. Sometimes when I'm at school, I'm not hungry at lunch and I waste my food. June, baby, you have a heart of gold. Maybe we can come up with another way to help. Until then, young lady, no more talking to strangers. Do you understand? Yes, ma'am, June said reluctantly. June did not really understand why her mom was so upset, but she agreed that she would no longer give lunch money away or talk to strangers.
The next morning, June walked to school with her older brother, Jay. Why do you have to come with me, Jay? I'm a big girl, June said as she walked far in front of him. You're talking to strangers and giving your money away. Mom doesn't like that, Jay shouted, trying to catch up with June. Jay told his sister that sometimes strangers look nice and harmless. He explained, some of those strangers are not so nice. It's best that you don't talk to any way on your way, anyone on your way to school. Jay went on to tell his sister that if it were important to her, he would give the homeless man a few dollars he had. Really, Jay? You're the best, June responded. Jay handed June four dollars from his pocket that he had been saving for a day at the arcade. June noticed the homeless man from the other day. He was sleeping. She did not want to wake him, so she gently placed the dollars from her brother into the man's hat. As she turned to walk away, she heard the man say, Thank you, young lady. You're remarkable and you will change the world one day. Those words stuck with June throughout the entire day. She continued to hear the man's last word in her, words in her head. You will change the world one day. Every night at dinner time, for as long as June could remember, her family would take turns talking about the good things that had happened that day. June loved doing this. She always had something incredible to share and that evening was no different. June, baby, it's your turn her mom said. She began telling her parents that she was sorry for talking to strangers and giving her money away. She also shared with him that she had figured out a way she could help people. Mom, dad, I want to make lunches for the homeless and give them out. June, what you just shared with us is amazing. Your dad and I would love to help. We can make a whole day out of it and invite the neighbors and your friends to join us, her mom proudly responded. Count us in, June, Jay said. June was elated by all the support she had received from her family. After dinner, she grabbed her pen and notepad. Sitting on the couch, she wrote down all of her ideas. At the top of the page, June wrote, June's Feed the Homeless Day. Her parents sat down on the couch and asked all about her plans and how they could help make it a great success. Mom and Dad, I would like to do this in the park on Saturday. We could give out sandwiches, bottled water, and fruit to all the homeless people. June told her parents what she wanted everyone in the family to do. Dad, will you make the flyers? Mom, will you get all the neighbors and the friends involved? I'll ask my brothers to help me fix the lunches. June, baby, you have this all figured out. I'll get started, Dad said. So will I, her mom responded. A few days before June's big event, she went with her brothers around the neighborhood. They passed out flyers to everyone and made sure to give each homeless person one too. June noticed the man she had helped sitting, on, sitting at the bus stop. Hello, sir. I would like to invite you to my event at the park this Saturday, she said as she handed him a flyer. The man looked over the flyer and immediately looked up, smiling at June. Young lady, I told you that you would change the world one day. I will most certainly be there. June smiled at the man and waved goodbye. It was finally Saturday morning, the day of June's Feed the Homeless Day. June and her brothers had been up all morning making lunches. Her parents were steadily packing the car with everything they needed. Rachel, June's best friend, showed up early to help along with the neighbors. Is everyone ready? Her dad enthusiastically asked in his loud voice. Yes, sir, was the response from everyone there. As June, her family, neighbors, and friends pulled up to the park, they noticed a long line of homeless men and women already waiting. Wow, dad, did you do that? June asked while looking at the large banner that read, June's Feed the Homeless Day. Yes, June, baby, I did. Thank you, Dad. Thank you. I love it. All of June's family and friends began passing out the lunches. Everyone was pleased and very impressed that such a young girl could have such a big heart. June could not stop smiling. Hello, young lady, a man said standing next in line for his lunch. 
June looked up and noticed that it was the man she had been giving her money to the last few mornings before school. Hello, sir, I was waiting for you. I have a special lunch just for you. June handed him a big bag from under the table. The man looked inside and smiled at June. Bless you. I told you that one day you would change the world. That was a nice story about June Peters. So when you see a problem, fix a problem, right? So June noticed that something was wrong in her community. She saw that the homeless men and women needed something to eat. And even though she's just a young girl, it's not like she could provide home housing for all of them, but she could still do her part, however small. And that small little part that June did made a big difference to a lot of men and women. So no matter how old you are, how young you are, how big you are, or how small you are, even a small act of kindness can make a huge difference in the lives of the people around you in your community. So think outside the box and go get to work and then I'm sure you will all change the world one day.